I'm going to show you some examples of how to load and unload scenes. Before I do, however, the scene I'm going to start in is my single main scene, which is going to load a single scene. As previously mentioned, whenever I load a single scene, it will replace all scenes with that single scene, and if I load any additive scenes with it as well, those will load too. I'm going to show you which scenes I will be loading so you know what to expect. Currently I am in the single main scene and this is what I'm going to use to move my character and load my new single scene. The scenes I'll be loading are single main 2 which has the red spear here and the network cube. So when that scene loads in you will see the red spear and the cube and the blue spear will actually go away because that is the old single scene. I'll also be loading an additive scene from my unique scene stacking demo and that will be the unique stacking additive scene and all that contains is the cube. So what you'll see if everything goes properly, which it will, is I'm going to move into the blue spear which will trigger a single scene change to the red scene and it will load the unique stacking additive scene as an additive scene. I have a script here as part of my example on the main two trigger. And you can see that as a single scene under the scene loader example, it will be loading single main 2 as I just discussed. I also have move identity checked which will move the identity which triggered the scene change. In addition to the new single scene, it's going to be loading unique stacking additive as the additive scenes and you can of course have as many as you like. While there are options for connection only, automatically unload, and on trigger enter, you can disregard these. The code will be loading the scenes as I discussed and it will be moving the identity, but to keep things simple, I won't be using these other options. What's going to happen is when I enter that blue spear, it's going to call the on trigger enter, and then it's going to call my load network scene, passing in the network identity that entered the trigger. And that's just down here. As you can see, this is where I generate my single scene data, as well my additive scene data, as that's all that is required by load network scenes. If I go back to the flex scene manager, under load network scenes, you can see that it expects a single scene data as well in additive scene data. I'm going to be generating these scene data by using strings rather than using the scene handle. The handle will typically only be used if you are using scene stacking as mentioned. But to keep it simple for now, we're going to use strings. To start, the single scene data is null. If you pass in null for single scene data or additive scene data, it will simply not load any of that type. I do a quick check if my single scene string is not empty, which is that string I showed you a moment ago in the inspector, then it will create a new single scene data using the single scene string, passing in the network identity of the object that hit the trigger. And just taking a very quick look back at the single scene data, whenever you pass in a scene name by string, as well network identities, it will generate a scene reference data internally, and it will set the moved network identities, which will be moved to the new single scene. Very similarly, under additive scene datas, if there are any additive scenes, then I will generate a new additive scene data passing in that additive scenes collection. And just as a reminder, I'm going to go to that constructor where you can see I'm passing in an array of scene names and it will generate scene reference data off from that. Then I'm going to call flex scene manager dot load network scenes because as I discussed, these are going to be loaded as a network scene to keep it simple, where I will pass in the single scene data and the additive scene data. If you know for a fact that you only need to load single or additive, you can always change these to null. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and then run as a client host and I'm going to move into the blue spear. Now I mentioned you'll see the red spear with the block because that is a new single scene and that did indeed show up. And you'll also see the block here that is from the unique stacking scene and that is right here. So everything appears to be working just fine. And just to show you that it is working as client only, I have a server build up here and in my editor as client and I'm going to do the same thing and move my player into the blue spear and again the unique stacking additive loaded as an additive scene and you can see given the bold context of the lettering that single main 2 loaded as a main scene. 
I'm going to show you one more final example of loading the network scene where I have the editor as server and I have two clients open as a build. I mentioned that when you load a network scene, all clients will always be in those network scenes. So with that said, when I move in this client, it'll change the scene for this client as well all other connected clients. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And it would appear that it did work for the client that moved into the trigger and that the other one appears to be broken. The project did actually work as intended. The reason that this one appears to be broken is because I did not transfer over the identity into the new scene. Therefore, there is no loaded player for this particular client even though the scene is loaded. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Previously in my load scene network method, I'm only passing in the identity which had triggered the scene load. I'm going to however change this up. I commented out the old code which generated the single scene data and I am now populating all network identities which exist on the server. Naturally, you probably have selective ones you want to move. I'm just showing you an example of using more than one identity. I'm going to make a new array of network identity and call it moved ident. It's going to be equal to the length of the current connections count. Granted, connections can have more than one object spawned at a time, so this code would not actually move all identities in the game per se, but it will move all of the first spawned object for each connection, which would be the local player. I will iterate through the network server dot connections dictionary, and for every value dot identity, I'm going to set that index to moved ident's. In other words, I'm just taking every connection's local player object and adding it to the moved idents array. Now I'm going to make a new single scene data. So I'm going to do SSD equals new single scene data. Again, I'm going to use the string name single scene, and then I'm going to pass in moved idents. Let's go ahead and save that and try it again. And keep in mind, I still have my other code here with the additive scenes and of course the flex scene manager dot load network scenes. Once more, I have the editor up as server and then two client builds open. I'm going to move into the blue sphere and you can see both of them are transferred over. And now that they are in the same scene, you can actually see the capsules on the other screen as well. If you're wondering why they could only see each other after they're both placed in the same scene, even though they both started in single main, is because under the flex scene checker on my player prefab, I have add to current scene unchecked. As I talked about previously with the flex scene checker, by having add to current scene checked, this will add the object as being registered in the scene when they spawn. However, since that is not checked, they're not being registered in the same scene, therefore they will not see each other. But of course, when I move them to the same scene using flex scene manager, it handles all that transition data and puts them together in the same scene. At this point, we have the knowledge we need to pretty much load scenes for connections and networked, whether it be moving a single identity, no identities, or several identities. We also know how to load a single scene as well additive scenes. What I'm going to do at this point is go from loading a network scene to loading a scene for the connection which hit the trigger. I'm going to keep the original code in where I only move the connection which hit the trigger. As I'm loading a scene for connections, there's no reason to try and move other connections into a scene which they're not being loaded for. So with that line cut, I'm going to get rid of this other code here and then just paste it back. Now it's set to load my single scene data, passing in of course the single scene string and moving only the identity which hit the trigger. And changing to load a connection scene instead of a network scene. Again, network scenes load for all players at all times, even new joining players, while a connection scene will only load for one player. And making that conversion is very easy. All I'm going to do is flex scene manager dot load connection scenes. And I'm going to pass in the triggering identity dot connection to client. This is the client I want to move into the new scene and you can also pass in multiple clients as a connection array as well. And like before, I'm going to pass in SSD, the single scene data, and ASD. And there is an option for load options as you can see, but I'm going to talk about that later. Now with this set, I'm going to comment out the load network scene and then go back to my editor. Now something very crucial about this is the server or flex scene manager by default will only keep scenes loaded as long as a player exists in that scene. 
This behavior can be altered using the load and unload options, but as of right now, we're going to use the default behavior. And previously, I mentioned the reason that players could not see each other is because they were not being added to the current scene which they were spawned. With that said, if I were to move a single connection into the blue sphere, even though the scene should only load for that one connection, it's still going to unload the single main scene because it thinks no players are in it, even if there are other players in it, because none have been added to the current scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my player prefab and click add to current scene so that when they spawn in, they are considered added to the single main scene. I now have the editor as the server again, and I have both of my clients in the same scene because they were added to the scene which they spawned. Now whenever I move a client into the blue sphere, since I am loading for connection, only that client is going to load into those new scenes, so let's go ahead and do that now. As expected, this client is in the new scene while the other client is still able to move around in their scene. Let's go ahead and move the second client into the blue sphere. Now with the second client into the blue spear, it loaded them into the same scene as the first client and they are now both in the same scene. What we did here is instead of loading a network scene which will load all players, we loaded a scene only for one connection and then we loaded them in one at a time. A quick look at that code again, all we really did was change from load network scenes to load connection scenes and as a first parameter, we're passing in the connection which hit the trigger and you can always pass in multiple connections as you like. With loading scenes out of the way, let's move on to unloading. I'm going to just jump right in and show you how to unload a network scene. Much of what you've seen before is going to be pretty much identical to this. And as I mentioned in the past, you cannot unload a single scene. If you want to change single scenes, you must load a new single scene. In my example, I'm doing an additive scenes data because that is what is required when you pass into the unload networked or even connection scenes. It expects an additive scenes data because you are unloading additive scenes. And I am going to generate that additive scenes data using my unload scenes string array. On the project itself, I still have the main two trigger here, except I added a scene unloader example script, which is the one we were just in. You can see this is the unload scenes array I was referring to and a scene I'll be unloading is called unloading main two. And we're going to disregard the rest of these options. Also notice under the scene loader example, whenever I move into it, that it will load unloading main two. So this is a scene loader example and this is a scene unloader example. What's going to happen is when I move into the blue sphere, the scene loader example will load this scene and when I move out of it, it will unload this scene. So let's go jump back to the code real quick. As mentioned, I'm just passing in a string array of the scenes I want to unload and I'm calling flex scene manager dot unload network scenes passing in that additive scene data. And just like before when loading scenes, you can create an additive scene data using both scene reference data as well passing in the string names, in which case I'm doing in this example. And since I am unloading this as a network scene and loading it as a network scene, it will both load and unload for all connected players. So let's check that out now. I have the editor up as the server over here and I have two clients connected. Now, as I mentioned, this is a network scene, so it's going to load and unload for all connected players. So I'm gonna go ahead and move one player in and you can see that the scene is loading. Because I mentioned when I step into the trigger, it will load the scene. And when I step out, it will unload the scene. This again goes to show that networked scenes are loaded and unloaded for all players at all times. If I wanted to unload a scene only for a certain connection, that is almost identical to the load scenes, except we're going to call unload connection scenes, passing in the connection we want to unload for, as well passing in the additive scenes data. The connection I'm going to unload for is the triggering identity, which is the player which has entered or rather exited the sphere. So I'm just going to do trigger an identity dot connection to client. And again, using the additive scene data. So I'm going to unload the scene only for the client that is exiting the sphere. Although it does not matter, I'm going to change this from unload network scenes to unload 
connection scenes just for clarification of the demo. And I'm also going to go back to the project and under the scene unloader example and loader example, I'm going to tick connection only so that it's not loading a network scene. I now have a new build up. Again, the editor as a server and the clients each as their own build. Now what I expect is to move one client in and have that scene only load for that one client. And of course it's gonna load on the server because the scenes need to be in sync with the server. And that definitely appears to be working. It is only loading for this one client. And if I pull that client out, it's also unloading for that one client. Just as if I move in another client, I'm going to see the same behavior. If I move that client in, the scene loads for them. And if I move them out, the scene unloads for them while also maintaining the scene for the other client. And one thing you'll also notice is that on the server, the scene will stay on the server as long as one player is currently in it. As you can see, I'm moving one player in and out, but the scene stays on the server. However, when I move the last player out, the scene is removed from the server as well because it is no longer needed. And this is something you can definitely bypass or go around if you want to keep a scene loaded even when there are no players. That's what you'll be using the load options for, and I'll be talking about that in a later video.